Good afternoon, everyone. Hope you all are having a great day so far. So today, uh, let's try to mitigate this glare a little bit. We have an iPad mini second generation. Uh, this is a 64 gigabyte model currently on revision 12.5.7 of iOS. Uh, we have a model number ME278LL stroke A. This is a US version, uh, Wi-Fi only. And today we are going to be investigating. And today we are going to be attempting to downgrade this device using a software that was recently built by some prominent members of the jailbreak community uh, known as Leet Down. And this would be to improve the compatibility of this device with some tweaks that I am going to be utilizing uh, after this device is jailbroken. So with that being said, uh, let's go ahead and head over to the computer, review some requirements, and then we will get started. So here we are over at the computer. Uh, here we are at the Leet Down GitHub page. I will post a link to the URL in the description. However, uh, here it is. Uh, we're just looking at the readme file for the moment. Lead down being this GUI, a graphical user interface Mac OS app to downgrade compatible A6 and A7 devices to OTA signed firmware. And in this particular case, we are going to be performing this on an A7 device. Uh, as you go through the page, you can see that nightly build currently will not work until further notice. Get the notarized release, which is this top link, which we will be clicking on in a moment. But first we can review compatibility here and the iOS devices that are compatible with the software for 8.4.1 downgrade will be the iPhone 5 and the iPad 4. And for iOS 10.3.3, which is what we are pursuing today, is for the 5S, the iPad Mini 2, and the iPad Air. iPad Mini 2 excluding the J87AP model. This particular model, I believe, was only released in China. I believe I have the j 85 or J86 revision as it was released in the United States. So regarding macOS compatibility, currently we are using a MacBook Pro from 2022, I believe, or 21. It's an M1 chip in any case. And it is currently on, uh, that's actually a good question. What am I on? Monterey. So that is beyond 11.0, I believe. However, this could also be done on Intel Max beyond Big Sur, or I believe that's Catalina 10.13 plus. So it also indicates that Leaddown is not compatible with the VMs. So Hackintoshes were successful uh, exploiting issues you encounter on environments other than real Mac hardware is up to you to resolve. So. Uh, they don't want you to open an issue regarding that if you're using a virtual machine and your USB stack is not working for whatever reason. So going down to installation, uh, this is typical for Mac. You would mount the DMG file, that image file, uh, drag the lead down app to your applications folder so you can go ahead and open it up. And then you would follow the instructions that are shown in the app. There are some troubleshooting steps here as well uh, for the A7 devices and Apple Silicon Max, which is the configuration we are going to be utilizing today. Uh, because of the OSB stack of those Apple Silicon Macs, uh, the device will disappear after a leak down uploads to the IBSS. So when you get the prompt, the device was lost, reconnect the USB cable to your Mac to resume the upload process. You would need to do what it says and the restore will resume automatically as well as making sure to reconnect the cable to your Mac and you don't need to replug the cable to your iOS device. There's some important information down here as well regarding being stuck at exploiting or the exploitation of fails. You do want to make sure that you're not using any USB hubs or type C to lightning cable. If your Mac only has a USB C port, you would need to use a lightning to type A cable and USB type C to type A converter which is what I'm going to be utilizing today. You also need to make sure you're not running lead down in a virtual machine, even though, you know, that was also stated up here as not compatible with virtual machines. 
and re-entering DFU mode uh, and trying to exploit again with the lead down is a common troubleshooting step. However, if it's still not working, you might as well just exploit it manually with iPhones or light. And if your device fails to restore, it shows that you should update to the latest iOS version with the iTunes Finder iDevice Restore and then attempt this again. And check if your USB cable is working fine as well as trying with a different USB port or adapter if it's running on Apple Silicon. We are going to be using a USB-C to USB-A uh, adapter with a lightning cable that I was using in a previous video. And actually, no, not this one. We're gonna be using another lightning cable, one that actually is lightning and not 13 pin. Uh, let's see. There are also instructions for build, building with Xcode working with the commands line interface. If you're having any issues, you can enable debugging in lead down settings. You can open an issue, fill in the template, attach the text file that's generated from whichever folder it populates to. I suppose that this will be documents. And then from there, you can upload the text file over to GitHub and uh, see if others have had the same issue as well as any uh, other additional support. So uh, shout outs go to the following supporters. Uh, Will Kellner, uh, this combination of letters, uh, QQJQQJ, uh, Jean uh, Sebastian Ross, as well as credits to uh, these folks who have developed this tool. So that's Axiom X for the Checkmate exploit. Tim Star once again for Future Restore. Uh, Cryptic once again for updated Future Restore. Mista, updated Future Restore. Dover to iOS for iPhone or Lite. Most I for boot patches and internal testing. Uh, Libby Mobile Dev for Libby Recovery. Console Log Luke for helping with dependency incident scripts for versions lower than 2.0. Uh, this application has been in development for quite some time, so. It's uh, it's a good thing that uh, there are people who are still working hard on this. Even though the latest revision of this, uh, as we will see in the releases in a minute, I believe is from February of 2022. So it's a couple of years old at this point. The zip archive, or archive, depending on how you pronounce it, for SSZip archive. AF networking for AF networking. Alitech 123 for the OTA build manifests. Uh, Irento Merck UK for lead down OTA updates. Exploit 3D guy for private testing. And 3 Toski also for private testing. A it's Ra 123 for private testing. And Mini Exploit also for private testing. So, other than that, there isn't much to go over. In uh, I guess now we can go ahead and take a look at the releases and uh, go ahead and proceed with running this tool. So with that being said, let's go ahead and head over to the latest notarized release. And let's take a closer look at this. So the most recent release uh, looks to be from uh, Valentine's Day of 2022. And this release was rebranded to Elite Down 22 Rev for a hotfix about pwn detection. It adds an A6 SOC support for downgrading to iOS 8.4.1 for those devices mentioned previously. It also adds official M1 support for any version of Mac OS 11 Plus. So that is the Apple Silicon. It vastly improves app and exploit reliability. And it also fixes boot chain upload errors on iPads, which is probably a good thing. So uh, if you like this project, please consider supporting it. These links will also be posted in the description as well. So we can see the assets down here, as well as the other version history. This project has been going on for quite a while. It looks like it was started in 2020. Well, or actually, no, there's a second page. Yeah, uh, September 8th, 2020. Well, quite a few years now. So let's go ahead and open up this asset and then we can go ahead and mount the file. After the DMG appears in your downloads folder, 
you will go ahead and open it up and similar to other applications you install, you will see a window like this. You simply click and drag the lead down into the applications folder. And after you open Launchpad, the lead down application should appear. Uh, once again, uh, every time you install a new application, you'll be greeted by this window, uh, the malicious software thing, at least on this version of macOS. Go ahead and click open and the application should open. And here it is. Now the application is waiting for a device in DFU mode to be detected. So we will need to connect our iPad and place it in DFU mode. So at the moment, the only lightning cable I have on hand is this Alex DCSD uh, sort of troubleshooting cable. Uh, you definitely do not need something like this. Any standard lightning USB type A uh, cable should work for this process. However, I currently have the iPad plugged in to the lightning connector. And on the other side, I have the USB A to USB C converter plugged into uh, that USB A connection. So now I will go ahead and plug this into the side of my computer. The iPad has indicated that it is currently connected, though it's not charging. Hmm. And then I received a prompt indicating, do I want to trust this computer? We can go ahead and trust it. And now the device is connected. So to aid us with entering DFU mode, there's a small uh, prompt here that's pretty helpful. We can click anywhere on the screen to start the instructions. We press and hold power and home for 10 seconds. Release power button, uh, but keep holding home button for 10 seconds. So presumably this is when the device is completely off. So let's go ahead and turn the device off first by holding the power button. After we hold the power button, we can go ahead and slide to power off. And then we can begin with this prompt again. It says click anywhere on the screen to start the instructions. Three, two, one. Press and hold the power and home button for 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Release the power button, but keep holding the home button for another 10 seconds. So it looks like we received a message that the iPad is in recovery mode. And when we return to the lead down application, it looks like the device was detected. So here we can see further information about the device. It is the iPad Me 2 Wi-Fi model, which is supported, uh, J85AP, the CID, serial tag, AP nonce, CPIT destination firmware, and it is not pwned. So now we can go ahead and proceed to selecting the 10.3.3 IPSW. We will go ahead and download it. And when it's fully downloaded, uh, we will be right back. So the download has finished and now it is extracting the IPSW and it has successfully extracted it. After selecting the IPSW, which was populated to our documents folder, it's checking the MD5, successfully verified, and it has extracted the IPSW. So now at this point, we can go ahead and select the downgrade button to initiate the process. A warning appears indicating that downgrading your device will erase all the data on it. It's already erased. However, I would recommend that prior to executing any of this, if you do have data on your device, you should back it up through iCloud or cold storage or whatever you use and go ahead and do that. We're going to go ahead and click OK. And now the downgrading process will begin. The device looks like it's rebooting. And unfortunately, we received this page.
page indicating that the exploit has failed and so please re-enter DFU mode to try again. So we'll go ahead and uh, do some troubleshooting and I'll be right back. So after simply reinitiating the process, it looks like uh, it's requiring that cooldown. It says replug now if needed on Apple Silicon. However, it looks like it's starting the restore process, so it doesn't look like we need to replug. Hmm. And on the iPad itself, uh, we can also see now that it's starting the restore. Uh, let's see if I can zoom out a little bit here. And currently the device is rebooting. It is starting the restore process. And now we are waiting for the device to reboot and load back up. So at this point, we can see that the restore has succeeded and the device is booting back into iOS once again with a little bit of loading here. So now that the device has fully rebooted, it has been restored. So we will go through a simple setup and then we will be right back. So at this point, the device has fully restored. If we go ahead and hit the home button, we can see that the background has changed as well. And the device feels faster, at least in my hands. We can go ahead and click the settings app. If we go to general and about, we can see that the device has indeed been downgraded to 10.3.3, which was exactly the outcome which we were hoping for. So thankfully, during that process, we did not need to, on the Apple Silicon Mac that we were using, unplug and replug that USB cable. So that turned out to be a boon in our favor. And if you are still running into issues doing this on, for example, an Intel-based Mac or perhaps a different Hackintosh of some kind of configuration or description, you can go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section below and we can all put our heads together and try to see if we can mitigate that situation and uh, push any solutions forward. Uh, so, and perhaps even document uh, that solution as well. So that's it for today's video, which turned out to be a success. Uh, thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave that in the comments below and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Uh, hope you have a great time. Take care.